Hey guys, today I want to talk about the supra and infrahyoid muscles, our throat muscles. Now, these muscles, they aid uh, in proper tongue posture, they aid in swallowing, uh, and they also depress the mandible, open the mouth. Now, what I've seen actually, because these muscles are quite interesting, they attach, well, they attach several places, there are several small muscles, but generally they attach between the mandible to the hyoid bone and down to the sternum. And because of this uh, attachment uh, configuration, they will aid in pulling the, the chin down. Now, this is a similar uh, function of the deep neck flexors. And because the deep neck flexors are often dysfunctional in patients with cervical uh, uh, tropical trauma, for example, whiplash or long standing uh, cervical dysfunction, jaw pain, and so on, patients will often uh, tend to clench those suprahyoid muscles in order to stabilize their neck and jaw. Now, the problem with that is that, uh, first of all, when you're all the time cheating, cheating as to posture by clenching these muscles, although they will help you to gain some stability, uh, most of the burden of the cervical spine will actually be put onto those muscles and it will cause weakness of the scalenes, of the sternocleidomastoid muscles and so on. I've seen this with many patients. Another very important thing is that because of their uh, anterior attachment onto the mandible, when you if you're clenching those muscles, it will actually pull the mandible back. And if you have been following my work, and especially my work on TMJ, you, TMJD, you know that when the mandible goes back, you compress the TMJ, and you will get TMJD, and this can compress the auricular temporal nerve, a part of the trigeminal nerve. Of course, the compression of the joint itself, it can displace the disc, uh, it can uh, cause cartilage damage, and so on. So this is quite detrimental. Now, how do we deal with this, and how do we identify it? First of all, what I do is that I put my patient into proper posture, and I will palpate that submandibular region, and I'll feel if they are tensed up down here. Oftentimes, you will see that they have like a, I call it a pseudo double chin, a false double chin, because they will, even if they are slim, they will have this very depressed skin under the mandible, and that is because the hyoid is situated too far down which is what happens when you clench it all the time, it falls down, it can make it difficult to swallow and so on. Uh, just short into that, the hyoid should be situated approximately longitudinally in level with the C3, mid C3 level. If it's further down than that, usually, and especially if you see that pseudo double chin, the patient will have a tendency of clenching their suprahyoid in posture. Now anyway, you palpate the submandibular region, you feel if the patient is tensing up that hyoid in order to stay in posture, and if they are, you need to teach them to get long in the neck and calm down, relax in the throat. And this can be very difficult for many patients. So it takes a lot of practice. But it's very important to know about this cheat, if you will, this compensation, because it causes a lot of problems, potentially, and it can also prevent progress uh, with regards to many exercises, for example, rehabilitation of the SM and so on, because, because the results may not stick, because the patient is not uh, enabled to utilize these, uh, these muscles in their posture due to that chronic, continuous hyoid muscle clenching. So once again, you palpate the submandibular region, you feel if they are clenching it, put them in a long neck position, uh, have them relax, feel again, are you clenching now, yes or no, etc. Okay, And then, of course, as they uh, have become aware of this dysfunction, they have to stop doing it while they maintain proper posture. What will also help is to strengthen the longus capitus muscle, which I have made other videos uh, of, on, because the longus capitus muscle have a very similar function. It elongates the neck along with the longus coli muscle, and it stabilizes the cranial cervical joint. And as those muscles are uh, becoming increasingly strong and functional, the patient will not feel that desire or that uh, need, if you will, to be clenching those superhyoid muscles. So I hope this video has been informative. I think this is a very important topic. It's also a very hidden problem most often. I have not heard anyone else talk about it. But I assure you it's very, very common. And if you have a patient with TMJD, for example, if they, and they keep clenching those muscles to stabilize their jaw and neck, it will be very hard to get them better. So it is of great importance to stop doing that. Have a nice day.